So what does this have to do with what I usually do? Oh. Hey guys, MasterCoX here. Now, I'm eschewing my usual Dragon Ball discussion videos as I'm preparing for a convention this weekend, AkumaCon in Galway, Ireland, one of my favourite conventions of the year. But I still have some time for a little bit of a discussion concerning a very hot topic right now in the world of geekdom and nerd culture, the Nintendo Switch. Yep. We're going there today! Back when it was revealed in November, I was so excited for it. Nintendo got their marketing strategy down pat. It was perfect. Marketed towards people in their 20s and 30s, they were young professionals, and they were on the go. This was their console for their community and their friendship base. Get your friends together after work and play some 8 player local multiplayer. Smashing stuff! Oh, those kids that Nintendo usually market to? No, no, don't focus on them today. Focus on the yuppies. After that initial reveal, I got loads of tweets asking for my opinion on the Switch, and I was very guarded about that, because there wasn't really much to go on aside from a trailer and maybe a few leaks here or there. I just held off on that until we could get some more concrete evidence and leaks and releases and more announcements from Nintendo directly. And we got that just a few days ago, so now is the time to actually sit down, look at what there is, and actually come up with an opinion. Note, this is my opinion, so I'm not telling you to think how I think. I welcome discussion here. So if you don't agree with what I'm saying, leave a comment below. So what do I think? Well, uh, based on recent events, my hopes have been severely dashed. As far as I could see from the presentation, they moved away from that brave new plan that they set out with the initial reveal trailer in November, and kind of stuck to what they knew. Motion controls and character gimmicks. Well, I must say, Bowser Dad is pretty funny. Throughout that presentation, I felt that Nintendo was just ramming things down our throats, saying, this is what it's gonna be, we got these guys here, they will make games for us, they didn't do it for the Wii U, and if they wanna come back to Nintendo, they better come and show their loyalty to it. They don't have to show games, they just have to show their faces. Yeah, you're gonna bring FIFA, yeah, you're gonna bring Skyrim, and you're gonna like it. Also, the poor English translator, he couldn't keep up in places, and this probably resulted in this tweet from Nintendo of America. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, please, Nintendo. No, Reggie, please. Now, the main reason I held off on talking about the Switch was because we didn't really have any concrete technical specifications, and I am a massive tech and AV geek. I love technology and gadgets and all that kind of stuff. It's my jam. I wanted to wait for some of those technical specs to come out, and thanks to Ars Technica, they have. The interesting thing I noted is that the system is powered by the NVIDIA Tegra X1 system on a chip, which is the same processor and system that is used in the NVIDIA Shield TV console. Not the one that's coming out soon, but the one that's already out. However, it's slightly underclocked, which means it runs slightly slower than the Shield console, probably to reduce strain on the overall system and conserve battery life. Maybe to cut down on costs and ensure that the system lasts for a very long time? Possibly. But when you take the switch out of its dock, the clock speed more than halves from 768 MHz to 307 MHz. That's a big drop. I understand why they would have done that would be to conserve battery life whilst on the go. But the already two and a half hour to six hour lifespan of the battery is kind of inconsistent and a bit on the low side. It implies that Nintendo had a lot of trouble trying to find a sweet spot between performance and endurance and they kind of stuck to what we have now. It's okay, it, it could be a little better, but I kind of understand. However, all the gameplay that I saw when the system was undocked was pretty solid. It ran fairly consistently at 720p, which is pretty reasonable. And according to Ars Technica, the Switch is more powerful than the Wii U. And it's region free. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Pokemon stars, if you ever become a thing, then I am sold. 6.2 inch touchscreen, 720p IPS display, similar to most PC monitors. And that converts to 1080p 60 frames per second when you actually dock the system to a TV and the base station. It can handle 720p and 1080p gaming at 60 frames per second. Nice. 32 gigs of internal storage. That is alright, it's like the Wii U Premium. No more 8 gig basic nonsense. 
but you do have the capability of putting in a micro SDXC card. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing, but that means that if you put in a memory card, you can get up to two terabytes of extra storage. Yeah, I think you're good. I mean, your wallet won't be, but you will be. If you want to have some decent storage, say from a 200 gigabyte micro SDXC card, that'll cost you about 79 pounds. And that's on sale right now. Don't even look at the 256 gig card. I said don't look. Speaking of prices, this is where my excitement drops considerably. The hardware for the Switch is pretty great. I love that the idea of the Joy-Con controller is that you can have up to two players in one, or just one player. It's very, very versatile. And the whole prospect of taking it with you anywhere you go is really, really, really exciting. It's a home console and a portable console in one. It's what the Wii U should have been. Even the price for the unit is reasonable at £280 or $299. I'll take that for what it is. I don't have a problem with that price, it's just for everything else. Okay, say if you wanted to have a second pair of Joy-Con controllers, that means you could have up to two regular players or four players total, that's going to run you about £70 or 80 bucks. What? That's ridiculous! I thought DualShock 4 controllers were steep, but this? That's a, that's a lot. Oh, uh, okay then, then I'll get a Switch Pro Controller. The Wii U Pro Controller was kinda cool. Oh, no, that's 60 pounds or 70 bucks. Oh. DualShock 4 Controller? 60 bucks tops. And you can find cheaper versions of that pretty easily on other stores. Okay, well, I have a Joy-Con grip that's bundled with the system. I can just slot the Joy-Cons in there together. I'll be fine. And that'll charge just like any other modern day controller for a modern console. That's fine. Oh, 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 oh no. The grip that comes with the system does not charge. It is a lump of plastic with some LEDs in them to denote players. You want one that actually charges? That will charge you 28 pounds or 30 bucks for the privilege. Okay, I see where this is going. Masako, stop, please. Not done yet. Okay, well, I can live with charging the Joy-Con controllers via the Switch base unit and dock. Yeah, that's that's fine. I I, I don't I don't need them. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, that, that, that's uh, pick some games. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine because uh, Nintendo will obviously want us to buy games in order to prolong the life of the console. Oh, forty to sixty pounds. Sixty pounds for the heavy hitters. <laughs> Nintendo, what are you doing? I want to like this system so badly. The whole portability of it is its main charm and I love that. But the prices for all these things are just so eye gouging. I understand that you might be making the console at a loss, but you, you can't just gouge us with prices for accessories. Surely that you can bring the price down, and if it's enticing, you'll sell more of it and therefore redress the cost and balance and everything, but no. Accessories and games are a key part of what makes a console successful, and if people are discouraged from buying things that will help enhance the Switch experience, that is going to only backfire. I get that this is a new console and it has some new technology which has never really been done before in this capacity and the games are new and they are on very dinky cartridges that probably cost a lot to make because they're proprietary but they could have just shaved off maybe five, ten bucks perhaps? I am not excited at the prospect of paying £280 for the Switch itself, £45 for a decent sized micro SD card about £30 for a Joy-Con charging grip so I can actually charge my controller, as well as £50 on average for one game. That is £405 outlay on launch day. I doubt that many people could reasonably afford that. Yeah, you could trim the price off a little bit by decreasing the size of the micro SD card, but that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. You're still having to pay about £40 to £60 for a game. £40 for the gimmicky title, £60 for the ones of the AAA games that everybody will really want to play. And that selection of accessories is relatively conservative. My friend EJ, who I work with on the radio show Let the Geek Out, attended the London Switch presentation over the weekend, 
and she echoes my sentiments pretty much, that the hardware is great, but the software and accessory prices are just too much, too steep. She is a massive Nintendo fan and she's not planning on getting a console on day one. Then there's the online service, which I understand will be a work in progress upon the Switch's launch. There will still be some bugs to iron out as well as performance enhancements. And the fact that it's free, which is good initially, it will be a subscription service come the autumn. And it involves pairing your Switch with a smart device like a phone or a tablet in order to get a true experience of online play with the Nintendo Switch. You will need your device. It seems integral to setting up parties, activating online chat, sharing friend codes, the like, as well as just keeping tabs of what the system can do and settings. Yeah, it's pretty reliant. Oh! Then there's the freebie game that you get every month, just like with PSN and Xbox Live. Those selections turn out to be sometimes good and often quite reasonable, and the discount is usually very, very good. So what does Nintendo offer? Uh, one SNES game or an NES game free for one month. Then you have to pay for it after that month. Wanna stick it to Ninty and not pay for their pesky online service come the autumn? Well, good luck playing online with anybody, or using any of the smart device integration. Uh, this seems kinda backwards. In any case, I want this console to do well. Nintendo deserves to be part of gaming culture. Because of Nintendo, it resurrected the video game industry in the 80s, stabilised it in the 90s, and made it accessible to everybody in the 2000s. The 2010s haven't been so kind to Ninty. The prices of the Switch accessories can easily be fixed. If you just shaved a little bit off the top, it would make things a little bit more enticing. Also, my criticisms of the online service, it's a little bit unfair because it hasn't really been demonstrated yet. I wanted to see it develop and actually be used on a day-to-day -day basis. And for the first six months, it's going to be a work in progress. So there will be some kinks to iron out and I will reserve final judgment on the online service, but my initial feelings on it aren't that great. Also, I wish they had more compelling games at launch, or if they could have just delayed the Switch coming out until the summer. If they just waited until then, they could get Splatoon 2 to come out, as well as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Having three, four AAA games at launch would be a lot better than just having one and some gimmicky games, which I admit do look kind of interesting. Am I going to get a Switch? Well, I'm gonna hold off on buying one. I'm, I'm not gonna get it at launch. That is if I can even find it anywhere now. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Are you going to get a Switch? Do you like my non-Dragon Ball related discussions? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until then, catch you later.